this yesterday, so I didn't buy jacket. Please didn't buy jacket. Are we on? Give me something to greet people now. We will do that one later. Maybe we'll let me greet people. Or you are not on yet. Let me greet my people first. Oh, oh, oh. All of them have been, we have been on for some time. All right, no problem. Oh, look, Bilay is here. Welcome, uh, guys. Welcome, everybody. Oluk Bile, Stella Ndubuise, Agatha Uku, Uku Rere, Aza Sarah, Amel Cyril, Lovet Onobo, Plutonic Togba, Wale Banjoko, Pastor Bebe, Shegun Fatumo, uh, Williams, Elo, Williams, hey, what did they happen? You got you got married and disappeared. After I gave you wife, finish. You met your wife on the platform and you got married, finish, and I can't see you again. You disappear, oh Williams. Williams, you don't disappear. Don't tell me that, that your wife they take you away. Oh. <laughs> are you a honeymoon or something? You see, this platform, people have started marrying on this platform. Oh. Hey, but after money, where could they disappear? Because if you disappear now, we will not allow other people to be married in the game. <laughs> Mtofi is here, Edwin Amimi is here, Innocent Magaji, Kaide, Adeni is here, uh, Wole Banjoko, Jide Amusa, Ifi Fernandez, Olabisi Olushoga, Tracy is here, Charles Adeniji. Uh, I Bokan is here, Christy Kelly, Samuel Abayomi is here, Nero is here, Pastor Nero. Well, welcome every one of you. Now it's time for us to start another day. Another day, another day of blessing, another day of love. Okay, our series is Knowing and Understanding God Through Love. Knowing and Understanding God Through Love. Knowing and Understanding God through love, knowing and understanding God through love. So that's the whole idea. That no, relationship with God, faith in God is about knowing Him. Faith in God, the whole reason why we want to have faith in God is to know Him, to understand Him, to be like Him, and to reflect Him. Um, to reflect Him with the sh 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 be glad, right? It's okay, it's okay. She will fix it. Uh, so, but the best way to know God and understand God is through love. So through love, we get to know God. Through love, we get to understand God better. Now, the topic of today is love is action. Love is action. Love is not passive. You see, people talk a lot about love in Nigeria. And, uh, but it's all about talk of, you know, you know talking. It's, it's to just love of, uh, you know, of talk, of mouth. But love really is about action. Love is about deeds. And the Bible says that if our faith or our love or our confession is not backed up with action, that it is in vain. It is dead. So faith without uh, you know, action, without, what how does it say? Work. work. Faith without work is dead. So love without work is, as, is dead as well. So work or love without work, sorry. L love without work is dead. So anytime we speak about love and we speak about we sh 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 sh. anytime we speak about love, we must be speaking about actions. We must be speaking about uh work, work in terms of action. I rather re use action rather than work. So faith without work without action is dead, and also uh love without action is dead. So love is action. So you tell me how you say you love somebody. You say you love your mama, you love your parents, you love your relatives, what are you doing for them? Or what are your plans for them? You say you love your country, what are you doing for your country? In action. I'm talking of action. What are you doing in terms of, you say you love uh, your neighbors, what are you doing in terms of action for them? You say you love humanity, you love people, what are you doing? What are you giving back to people in terms of action? In terms of work? 
You say you love uh, your, you know, your, your, you know, your community that you live in. What are you doing actively for that community? You see, many people who have been watching us or who have been on this platform, a lot of them have not been following up in action of what they have been learning. And that is tragic. That's a tragedy. The whole idea of this thing I'm doing is not to make you come here and be listening to me and be applauding me. No, the whole thing that I want to do is to show and prove to you that you are as good as anybody else. You are as good as any geo. You are as good as any bishop. You are as good as me. You are not worse than me. You are not worse than any geo. You are not worse than any bishop. You are not worse than anybody else. And step out into your own calling. Step out and begin to do something proactively. It's time for you and I to begin to act. Act out on the things that uh, you have been learning from here. So I expect all of us to begin to do, to begin to put action into our faith. To begin to put action into our love. We have been talking about this love for some time now. What are the action plans that you have to begin to, you know, manifest that love? You know, that, you know when I was doing my two weeks uh, solitude before the new year, and that was what God showed to me. He showed me that go and tell people that this new year, that they must do, they must dedicate themselves to doing good for to the less privileged people. And even, you know, sometimes we have challenges that, okay, we have so much pressure on us. And we think, I cannot afford to get any more money. I cannot afford to uh, find money to use. I would like to do a lot of things, but I cannot afford to find money to do it. But you know the way to do it? The way to do it is that we, if for us Christians, we shouldn't have that dilemma. And especially with this teaching that I've brought to you, you shouldn't be confused anymore about where to find money. Because all of us, we are already, we've already been taught that we must pay tight. So we all know that there is a place for tight. Now, what you should just do, that instead of giving those same tithes that you, you already are familiar with separating aside, instead of you giving it to church that you don't know what they are going to do with it, if you know that the church is going to do, is doing the right thing that you would have done with the money, then you can take it to the church and do it there and give it to them. But if you are not sure of what the church is going to use it for, why don't you take that your tithe and go and just split it into the bodies, into the areas. Look for where there are needs. Look for where you, know, you can actually show. You want to ask yourself, where do I want to manifest this love in practice? So get your tithe together. Maybe 10% of that tithe, if you love your church and you believe in your pastor, you believe in your church, take that your tithe, divide it into 10. 10% 10 of it take to the church just for them to, I mean, they say you are receiving from them. It's okay. So since you are receiving from there, take the tenth of the tenth there to just say at least I'm grateful. Since you are giving me anything here or you are feeding me, it's also okay to be grateful. So take 10% of the tenth to your church. Uh, we're glad we're in the church. Take 10% of the tenth to that church, but then the rest of it, the rest of it, you know, divide them. Maybe you will divide them into five. Maybe you divide them into ten. Maybe you divide them into any amount. Depends on the people you want to reach out to. But make sure, my advice is this. If you want to demonstrate love, love in action, that if, if you don't have any more money, I'm talking about if you, don't, if, you, if you don't have any more money other than your tithe, right? If you think, where will I get more money from? So you, know, so you can still use your tithe to do the work of Jesus, to do the way God, what God wants you to do. So you could actually use your tithe that you have been given to those churches Divide them. Make sure that you include there the uh, poor. Make sure that you include there the underprivileged. Make sure that you include there somebody from your relative or your family members. If you don't already have for them, and then make sure you, you, you put, include in that one also your village or your environment or your community. So if they are too small and you cannot, let's say the money you are going to give is too small and you, can, you cannot help the community, be piling it together. So what you could do is to open an account. So when you get your time, you divide them into how many departments you want, maybe three, four, five. And you say, okay, this one will be going to my, uh, my relatives. This one will be going to my, uh, my community, you know, my village. This one will be going to uh, the widows. This one will be going to children. So you have five articles like that. Then this one will be going to the church. That will be one-tenth of it. 
So that way, even if they are small, by the time you you, you put them to bed, pile them together for one year, you will see that it's a tangible amount of money. What I'm just trying to say is that find a way to express the love that is in your heart. Find a way to express the love that God has put in your spirit. Find a way to demonstrate it. Do something physically. Do something practically. Do something to improve people's life. Okay, let's say you don't have money. Let's say you don't have money. What you could also do is that you could be, you know, love doesn't have to be money, right? So we don't want to be like those our Jews that are saying everything is money, money. So let's say you don't have money, uh, but you can still express love. For example, how can you do it? You can do what I'm doing. You can start Facebook Messenger. You, can, you, have, you don't need to start it. You already have it. Go to Facebook, not Facebook Messenger, just Facebook. You know, if you can talk, that is an, a way of expressing love. Only don't be expecting people to be giving you something back for the, for the love you are giving us. So go and give, go and serve. This, when you, love is something that you don't expect to get something from again. So it must be something that you are doing to people without expecting anything in return. So when you go, let's say you want to do Facebook Messenger or, Facebook or whatever, live broadcast. If you want to do Facebook live broadcast, don't get, take tight from there. Don't take offering home. Don't exploit people. Just give people without, without uh, what do you call it, without anything asking or demanding or expecting anything to come back. You don't even need to ask for likes. People always ask for like. Say amen and put like or something they say. Don't expect like. And if you want people to share it, it should only be, you are telling them to share only because you have the interest of others at hand. Not because you want to be popular. Or not because you want to get more likes. But you just want people to be reached. If that is the motive that you have, then you can tell people to, to share it. So that is another way you can do also put action to your, to, your, to your love. Another way you can practice love. And since we are talking about love is action. Another way you can put your love to action is by starting an NGO if you can afford it. Why don't you look into your heart? and find the burden that is in your heart. What is the burden that you, is in your heart? What do you have burden for? Maybe you have burden for women. Start a, a, an NGO. If you need to do uh, a women ministry in the, your community or your country where you are, start a, an NGO that's a platform for yourself and begin to look for where you can find those people and begin to do something that you can do for them or you can teach them or you can, you know, so there are different ways that you could uh, put action to your to your to 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 your to the love that is in your heart. If you maybe have a body for the church, for the body of Christ, for example, and you say, "Oh, I have been delivered on this platform. Oh, how can I give back?" The best way for you to give back is to now reach out, find a way to reach out to the same people who used to be in the same state of mind that where you used to be, who used to be under the same deception who used to go to church and be deceived and uh, were under the slavery of these pastors, just like you were before. So find a way, maybe through live broadcast as well. Maybe you will just take any of my books. Maybe you read one of these books and you are blessed. Why don't you do a book review? Why don't you start a program by reviewing a book by live, on live broadcast? Or you don't need to do, even do live broadcast. Maybe you want to do own group, Bible study in your house. Or you can just make announcements and put advertisements out there in your community or on, on Facebook or anywhere and say, I want to be talking, I was blessed by, no, I want to be talking, I want us to study this book. This book is about, for example, who am I? If you want to know who you are, please come. We'll be studying it together every, every week or something. Maybe online even, or maybe on telephone, maybe not even physically in your house. You could even gather people on, on, on Facebook and, and people will get connected to you on phone or on Facebook or something, or you could form a group on WhatsApp. So you could start a group on WhatsApp and say, okay, on WhatsApp, we'll be meeting every week or every day and we'll be studying one of DSA's books. And you, are doing, you could start a, uh, a home group that way. Everybody can have a home group through Facebook or through uh, WhatsApp or through one of these you know, social media that you have. So just put action to all the things you've been learning. Put action to the love that is in your heart. God has blessed you with some blessings, with some knowledge, with some love, with some faith, with some revelation, with deliverance, with some happiness, with some joy. All these things that you have been receiving while you have been listening on this platform, why don't you put action behind it? If you've been listening to the messages, to the testimonies of people from Kiev, Ukraine, you know, there are testimonials when you go to my 
to our YouTube page. You could see different testimonies. You go and listen. Please take your time to listen to the Ukrainian testimonies. You will see that all of them are aggressively giving back. So Christianity is about giving back. We don't just receive. It is actually more blessed for you to give back, to give than to receive. So measure your life by your giving. Measure your life by your giving. And your giving doesn't just have to be in cash. Your giving could be in just reaching out. Your giving could be in sharing your, what you know. Your giving could be in reaching out by consulting. You could maybe you, you've got some knowledge now. You, so a lot of people need help there. Maybe you can be doing consultation by live broadcast, Facebook, or consultation by uh, WhatsApp, or do consultation to people in that, that particular area where you have body for, or where you think you are most skilled in. There are a lot of people right now who are doing their own live broadcast just because they have been on this platform. And God is blessing them. You know, people like Anastasia McDonald, she's been absent for some time now because she lost her mom. So she's not been... Uh, but if you look at someone like Ayo Akerele, you know, he's been doing a great job as well. And Pastor Nero has been... I think I've, been, I've seen him a, a few times. Someone like Anu has been doing a good job. Victor has been doing... So a lot of people have been doing... People like Doris Ngere. People like... I, 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 I think uh, Ogene Tega used to do... I, she dis I don't know if she's... But I think she disappeared for some time now. But Ogene Tega used to do live broadcast and, you know... Yeah, so people like that, you know, they are reaching out, even if it is one person or two person in the beginning, don't worry, but you do your own work, make sure you invite people, make sure you wake, awaken the interest of people, make sure you, you know, invite them individually, make sure you share with them, you know, do something to give back. That's what you, should, you, must, you, must, you must do. Or maybe you, you will say, I cannot do much, I'm too busy. Maybe you are too busy, maybe you are working, maybe you don't have the time, maybe you cannot even speak. Okay, don't worry. Why don't you make it a, a, a point of duty to just be sharing what you have learned? You know, I know some people who just go to YouTube or Facebook and just take a link of any message they like and just post it every day. You know, many, maybe four, five, six uh, videos and just post them and, and write something. You must watch this or this is good for you. You know, even by doing that, it's as good as you uh, you know, do you know you are doing something? Always look for action. What action can you put into whatever blessing God is giving you? What action can you back it up? You what can you use to back up whatever God is giving you? You know, when I was 20, 22 years old, I made a decision for myself that I will never receive something from anybody without finding a way to give back. It might not even be to that person. But anything that I receive, it will never become a pound, a pound in, in my life. Or is it a pound you call it? Huh? Pound. Yeah, a pound. It will never become a pound in my hand, in my life. So uh, what is that? Stagnant water. It will never become a stagnant, st stagnant water in my life. Anything that comes to my life, I will find a way of giving back. Not necessarily to the person who gave me. For example, you are receiving from me now. You don't need to give back to me. Because if you give it back to me, it means you might want to look for favor or something. No. Go and look for somebody that you could also bless. But never become a stagnant water. Because it is much more blessed for you. It is what you are receiving. is the blessing, but that is even less than when, when you begin to give it out further. It is when you begin to give out further, that is when real blessing will come to you. What are the other ways that you could use to put action into the blessings and to the love that God has been giving to you on this platform? I told you oh, the other day, we, you know, there is a guy, I think Eze is his name. He's the only one that has been helping us with this. I think our Christian as well has been helping. But what he does is that, you know, I, I'm talking for so long. I, I was speaking here the other day with Peace, and I was thinking about it after we spoke, because she said, why is it that sometimes... People even wash your messages less than the ones that, you know, other people just say. And I discovered that some of the people cannot walk, wash for long, especially people on Af in Africa. They cannot wash uh, three hours, four hours program that I'm doing. So for them, it's, it will not, just not go. They will not waste their, some people even say for the two hours something that they are, uh, they are whatever, data finishes in the, you know, stock less of four hours. So what we also need to do, you don't even need to do it for me. 
what this guy did is that he takes my messages like the one i'm doing today now he cuts them you know the point that i'm making you know like i'm making this particular point maybe for the 15 minutes or the, the so he cuts them like into different points you know maybe one could be cut into five ten or six parts you know he's cutting them into 15 15 20 minutes no not more than 30 minutes 10 5 you know depending on the point i'm making and puts titles to them and he's created his own page that way he created his own page that way so and his page is growing fast because of that why because people love those short short something and that is another way to spread this so he's this is his own way of giving back to other people and showing gratitude so we need people who will be able to do that as well if you have the uh, time and the mechanism of doing that then we need editors people who will just be able to edit some of the things that we are doing because i have a lot of materials that we are not even releasing yet that i've already recorded because we need people to help us edit them because our crowd there the church that i have here they are russian people they don't speak english they cannot edit they cannot they don't understand so they cannot help me only people who speak english can help so uh there are different ways you can give back but what i'm trying to say is that love is action so look for a way of you you know putting action into whatever you gain whatever you learn whatever blessing god has given you make sure you find a way to put action into into helping into helping people so maybe you even want to just be a distributor you know by you being a distributor even though you are making money from it because if you are a distributor you are going to be making 40 to 50 percent since you know from every book minimum 40 to 50 percent or sometimes up to 60 percent from every book or 70 percent from every book but at least 20 40 to 50 percent but even by that we are also serving because you are reaching out to people you are helping people to get the books uh uh easier or faster or you know you are or you could even create a reading club or either by online or in your house make sure you are doing something that is indicating that you are giving back so there it might be in action or it might be in finances but you must have some a way of to give back that is how you demonstrate your own love for god by loving people so create a way find a way if you are too busy your times are too busy buy time through money like that what i was talking about when i said my wife doesn't cook and i don't drive because we are using because our time is much more valuable so we are buying our time back through money so the money we are paying the drivers and the assistants and the cook and everything for us let's say you are paying all the cooks or one cook one thousand dollars a month that one thousand dollars you are paying in a month <laughs> every day that means is how much 300 or well 30 you know it's nothing yeah it's like 100 eh? 100 a day or 30 a day 30 30 dollars a day so it's 30 dollars a day a whole day eight let's say it's even eight hours my eight hours of day or eight hours is worth more than 30 dollars my one hour is worth uh, one thousand dollars minimum when i'm not doing anything active my one dollar i mean one hour is worth 500 dollars so that is just me. My one hour is minimum one thousand US dollars. So how can I be using one thousand US dollars? You know, you know, doing three hours of that. That's one hour, one thousand dollars. So if I am using, you know, three hours to drive in a day or five hours, it means that I have used five thousand dollars in a day alone. Multiply that into thirty, thirty. You know, so I, it's too expensive for me to use my time. I would rather buy that time back by hiring people. So maybe it's the same thing with you. Maybe your time is too precious for you and you don't have time to do more, most of these things that I'm talking about. But what you could do, you could use money to buy it. You know, if you have those money, what will you do with it? Divide it, like I said. Or even if you don't have money, use your tithe. Divide that tithe. Look for the needy people and distribute to people as God will put in your heart. But let so then you are the one responsible for your own money and for your own tithe. You don't need to hope that pastor will spend it well or church will not spend it well. It will be you. But always have something in your that you are doing, you are giving back. That has to be a policy. That has to be a lifestyle for every one of us. Make sure that you are giving back. You know, I can't tell you countless number of times 
that people have come to me that they want to be giving their tithe to me. Why? Because they said they stopped going to church. And now they, oh, their church is this platform. Maybe I have 1,000 people who want to do that. You know, you know what I tell every single one of them? Don't give me tithe. I don't need your tithe. They are, because <laughs> even if I don't have anything today, even if I, am, I, I don't even have what to eat, I am still well off than millions, billions of people. So I always tell people, take your tithe. Go and look for people in your village or in your relatives, in your something. Go and bless somebody. Why me? You want to do show, you know, what they call it, the language in Europe. Eye service. You want to do eye service? Go and use your tithe. Go and look for people who are really in need more than me. I mean, I know in need now. Let's tell the truth. Uh -huh. So go and use, look for people who are really in need. So, because if I take that tithe from them or money, I, I am a loser. I'm going to lose. Because then it will no more be my service. It will no more be me giving back. Whereas what they don't know is that this thing I'm doing now is my own way of appreciating God. Thanking God for what he's doing for me, he has done for me. It's my own way of serving God, by serving you all, by serving people. So if you now want to compensate me for that and give me something, you kill me, you kill my ministry. This is my ministry to God and to man. It's my own way of saying thank you, oh God. Oh. So I don't want anybody to stand on that way and use their kindness to deprive me of my ministry. So that's what I'm talking about. All of you must have your own ministry like that too. Maybe it is five widows who you want to adopt. Maybe it, it is ten children who you want to take back to school. Let that be your own service. At least you know God. Before God, when you appear one day, God will not say, I was naked. And you didn't do anything. I was hungry, and you passed by me. He would not say that. I was sick. He would not say you didn't visit me because you are your money is doing it for you. That is what God wants from every one of us. There is no one here. If you are spending some money every month to put aside for your house, God no die for house. So. Because you want to build family house, or you want to build one house before you die, brick na brick you the build na sando. But the human being that God died for, you know, they put anything aside. Me, I don't understand that. Even from the time I was married to my wife, even before I was married to her, but since, let's not start from the day we were married, we agreed. Our tithe is going to be 25%. So for all, the first day of our marriage, our tithe, not tithe alone, we don't call it tithe, but whatever we give out every month, tithe is 10, then another 10 for other people, then another five, you know, for giving. So in all, we give 25% out every month. That was before I knew that few people are taking, people, they shop tight. So now I tell people, they couldn't take up to church. <laughs> if you are not, especially if you are not sure of what the people are going to do with your tight, take that thing and go and use it with your own conscience. Where your conscience, where you know that your conscience is clear. That you know where it's going. I mean, you'll see the result with your own eyes. And you'll be happy that at least I'm doing something. So, love. If you say you love God, love for God must be in action. And in action how? To God? No, you can't find him. He's far. He's a spirit. So, it's only to man. So if you are not, you must have some things you are doing for human beings like you. That's what I'm talking about. You must have some things, some action that you are doing to demonstrate your love for God to human beings. So let's think about it um, together. What can I do to heal that human being to demonstrate that I love God? You know, he said, the uh, uh, good Samaritan, he stopped and did something for man. But this church man, the priest, 
He was in a hurry to go to church. He was going to church to do something for God. God went there for heaven. He was in a hurry, passed by man, to go and touch God. It's not possible. You cannot touch God without touching man. If you don't feel stop to touch man here for high earth, you don't go touch God when they far. You cannot touch God that is far away when you, you cannot touch a human being, physical, that is here. And then the praise and worship leader too, the Levite, what did he do? He was in a hurry to go to church to praise God because we want to do some, uh, is it, ephemer, what do you call it? ephemerical things? What do you call it? What's the word I'm looking at? Ephemerical, right? Uh, ephemeral. ephemeral ephemeral thing yes we want to do some ephemeral thing we would rather do ephemeral things like praise and worship or uh, what intercession ephemeral things like you know you know dance ephemeral things like i attend church i came uh, those are ephemeral things spiritual stuff celestial stuff like that that God said, not be the way to please me. You cannot please me that way. That's not what I want. If you, you cannot touch God without touching man. You cannot please God without touch, pleasing man. You cannot love God where you know they see without loving man where you did near you. So the, all of us must have programs, some agendas, some things. Not be the one you did do for your, I'm not talking about the one you are doing for your nuclear family. I'm not talking about the one you are doing for people who are related to you alone, no. Those ones are just gratitude for whatever they do it for you, for you before, or they are your relatives or something. I'm talking about things you will do for people who cannot say uh, thank you to you. Things you will do for people that you don't even know. Things that you will do for people that you will know that this one is God you are doing it for. Love is action. So if you love God, what are the actions? Actions, what are the programs? What are the projects? People are telling me, Pastor, come to Nigeria and start church. Me, I'm not interested. I'm going to Nigeria. Eh? Maybe I will start to, but God has to work eh? extra, extra, extra time to convince me that I will start church. I would rather mentor people like success if he wants to start. He said he don't go to be pastor. He has written, I wrote read this article. But it's people like success, people like I know, people like uh, Victor, if they want to be pastor, they don't, they don't, they don't want to be pastor again. But anybody that has the calling, I would rather help them and teach them how to do it. But I don't, I'm not interested. What am I interested in? I want to go practice love. That is what is taking me to Nigeria. I want to put love of God into action and show my country what love means and show my country how to really love God. You love God by taking care of a man being that God died for. I mean, if God would die for people, person, mostly more poor, God died for human being. That is the ones I want to go and care for. So that's what's taking me to Nigeria. I have a whole transformation project. That is what I want to go to Nigeria to do. I want to uplift my people. This week, I was having my solitude. And I came up with, God helped me to come up with some exclusive plans of what I could do for Nigeria. I have already big one, but now I'm having other things of how to make Nigeria the desire of nations. I've written down many, many pages this week. So I'm... I'm not interested in just going to gather some people to come and sit down and be clapping at me or something. No, no, no. If I'm going to gather people, it's just to teach them to go and do like this. Like I'm doing here. That's what I want to do. Gather people to go teach other people. To go teach love. To go teach knowledge of God. Understanding God. That's why if you are here today and you have not registered for the mentorship program, make your own know. Because it's sundayadilajablog.com slash mentorship. Go and register. So I'm not interested in taking glory. And that's what I tell people. Even if I'm going to start church tomorrow in Nigeria, I'm not going to, that church will not be taking offering. It will not be taking tithe. And the only time we'll be taking tithe, I mean offering or whatever, is to distribute for, to, for people so that people will not be in need. Remember now, re, this is video. You know this is being recorded now for video. Save it in your computer. So that when I get to Nigeria and I begin to collect offering, you'll say, ah, this man is a false prophet. He's a liar. He said he no go collect, and then they collect. Because I do, I would not. 
I would rather be giving. That's the kind I want to push for that so that churches in Nigeria, at least one person or two persons will follow that, uh, that example. Even if I don't start church, I will still be gathering meetings, I will be doing meetings and uh, conferences, and you see, I will not be gathering money. And the only time I will be gathering money is to take care of that community or to take care of that those people who are in need there. But the money will not be coming to I will give it to people. Let you go and distribute it. You go and do that. Some people, you know what some pastors are telling me? My friends, pastors, they are telling me, Pastor, Pastor Sunday, don't worry, money day for Nigel. Ah! Nigel, money day. They said, Pastor Sunday, if you get to Nigeria like this, all those your projects that you say you are going to do, you don't even need to worry. By the time you hit ground, that people will just be bringing you. He said, we that are not even big like you, we know what they, 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 they bring to us. Some of them are in Europe. They say, well, we just go to Nigeria to just preach like one hour or 14 minutes or 30 minutes. They say they do something they call honorarium. And I know honorarium. So yeah, they said that honorarium that we, some of them say we don't receive it in our whole year salary. And the Nigeria, with the carry I'm come from Nigeria, that is what the, the way people carry money go pastor. They bless pastor. They said they are living in Europe. They don't see the kind of money where they give for honorarium. So they said, Nigeria, don't worry, go there. They will just be bringing. They say, you know, they won't ask. You don't even need to ask. Nigeria man has been brainwashed already, ready for you. They will just need to say you are a pastor and you did some miracles. They will just be bringing the thing. All the pastors who are big are billionaires. I said, we are going to change that culture. Let them be taking all that money to do things for people. They shouldn't be taking money to pastors. Let pastors go and work. Let pastors go and start business. Let pastors go and find ways of, of, of sponsoring their own ministry. Now, if you believe in your pastor, give to them. If, you, if the pastors are contributing to you, if the pastors have helped you, they have changed your life, give to them, please. If, they, if you believe in the vision of the church, contribute. If they are doing well to you, take money to them. You know, pay tight to them if, if you believe in them. But if you don't, go and do it yourself. But even after doing that, whatever you want for your church and for your pastor, you must still have your own projects. You must still have something that you yourself, you are doing to prove to God that you love him. Some actions, some projects, some programs, some activities, some outreaches, some NGOs, some civil activeness, some you must be having some actions that are set up by you. Some programs, some, there must be some things that you are doing and some acts of love and kindness that you are doing to show God that you love him. Love without action is dead. Just like faith without action is dead. If you don't have some programs that you are doing, some outreach, you are a dead man. I'm not talking about the evangelism to bring people to your church. No, no. I'm talking about act of love. You must be doing something. I want us to see, to have a look at a video here that will help us to get the message about love. We we'll, we'll have a look at the video. I've talked I've talked enough. Let's see action. Love is action. So many people are waiting to be sent back to school. So many people need scholarship. So many people cannot uh, pay for their school fees. So adopt something. Adopt a project or two or three. Anything you, you can cope with. Okay, here we go. So back in March, I released a video titled Homeless Lottery Winner where I made a homeless man named Eric think yeah. that he won the lottery. The video went viral and gained national exposures from news shows, websites, and hit the front page of both YouTube and Reddit. People were touched by Eric's selfless act of wanting to share the money and kept sending me emails and messages asking how they can directly donate to him. So we set up a fund where people could donate online to Eric. In 17 days, the internet raised $44,000 for Eric. I want to take this time to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart who has contributed to the fundraiser. Again, thank you. I'm grateful for your help and generosity. So this is how we're going to break down the fundraiser money. 11000 will go towards rent for one year in a house I found for him. 3700 will go towards 
furniture and appliances. Well, 2900 will go towards utilities, water, cable, and... So what we have here is that she will read Naslava. Sorry guys, so what is happening here is that this man that we saw there, can you go back? He saw a homeless man that he took out of the street and later discovered that oh, that homeless person shut out to the back to his mortuary. That homeless person needs to be. No, I'm not getting paralyzed. I'm supposed to read it. That homeless person, uh, he took him from the street, and then the homeless he gave some, the homeless some money. And that homeless person was taking the money to go and share and give to other homeless people. He was not greedy. How many of us can be like that? So he showed the story. He was not, the homeless person didn't know that they were shooting him. Let's say they gave him $100. And out of the $100, he took maybe 50 to himself and the other 50 he was looking for other people and giving them. Ah! And when he showed that, he took, they were throwing, shooting him and he didn't know. So he took, they took that video and showed to the public and said, this homeless man was giving $100. Look at what they did with it. People were so touched that everybody started saying, eh, we are going to, let's, can we give him more? Can we contribute to him? In two hours or so, or two days, they gathered $44,000 for this homeless man. The rest is history, let's see. Just because of his kindness. He's not greedy. He's willing to give back. That's what I'm saying. That we must have that mentality of willingness to give back. So everybody that is watching me today, and if you have been watching me on DSA platform, what are you giving back? What are you, what, I want to hear your stories. That's why we have this platform that we call Kingdom Fruits. What are you doing to give back? What is your ministry? Or you don't, you, you just the take. You know they give back. What are you doing for your community, for your country, for your village, for your church, for your country? What are you doing to give back? That homeless man, because he decided to give back, is ever open over him. He didn't give back to church. Oh. He was giving back to other people like you who are less privileged. Ever opened. And he didn't know that people ever was. That's what I say. Whatever you give to God, it's like, it's like buying shares. It's like mortgaging. You are, God is owing you. You are lending to God. And God will find a way of returning to you. Let's hear the story further. I'm grateful for your help and generosity. So this is how we're going to break down the fundraiser money. 11000 will go towards rent for one year in a house I found for him. 3700 will go towards furniture and appliances. 2900 will go towards utilities, water, cable, internet, and insurance. 5000 will go towards house supplies, clothes, and food. And the rest of the money will go into a joint bank account that Eric can access and I can monitor. I want to make it clear that none of this fundraiser money will be used by me. This is strictly Eric's money. So now, I'm going to surprise Eric with the house and give him a tour. Hope you guys enjoy it. So, this is Eric's new house. Um, it's pretty empty in here. We're in the living room right now. We're gonna go out, get new furniture, get new appliances, get whatever the house needs, and we're gonna fill it up. So, uh, can't wait. Excited. Let's do this. Let's go back. Let's go back to where the diagram was. I was going to use the money. So I want you to pay attention to what he did. Because the homeless man doesn't have a, an account number, right? And it is through this man that they know they could only send the money to his own account. So he decided to help. He decided to help the homeless man and bring the, you know, make the money work for him. So what he did is he took the money, it's $44,000 in, in total. He took it and took a, he took a house for the homeless man for one year. And that will cost 11000 to pay a house, a whole house in America for a whole year. So 
That was then it is they, they bought furniture and all the technical appliances that will be needed. So that is going to cost 3.7. Then utilities, cable, insurance, things that will cost 2.9. Then joint bank account, okay, that before then. Supplies like clothes, food, it is in 5,000. So this man is helping him to make a policy, financial policy, right? Uh, pass the budget. So then they put half of the money, half of the money into savings, like into investment. So joint bank account. But they didn't just put it in his own account by himself. The guy who is his mentor, we know has access to the money as well, but he will not be taking the money. Only the guy can take the money, but he has to give report. Why is he withdrawing? He already has all this thing. What do you want to do with it? So they decide, they help him to, that is mentorship. They are not just giving him money to go and run away with it. That is good giving. You are helping him to know how to spend. You are helping him to spend judiciously, and he will not just take the money and run away and just go and drink with it or do anything with it. So they put him under accountability. And when you know that somebody is washing your back and somebody is overseeing you, then you don't just mess up the money. So this is how we can also do. Maybe this is an example to somebody out there today. Maybe you have a project for people in Nigeria, students or poor or widows. Don't just give them money. Why don't you set up a mentorship for them where you could be able to train them, teach them financial laws, be able to give them guidance, be able to you know, lead them so that they will not go astray. But this man doesn't know what is going on. No. That uh, homeless guy, he's just living his life in the street, continue living his life in the street. He didn't know that what he did, that they saw it, and that they had gathered money on his behalf. He doesn't even know. And this is now what this guy is going to do to surprise him. Just take him to a whole house. Someone that doesn't even have a flat, now he's getting a house. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Just continue where I am. 1,000 will go towards rent for one year in a house lockdown for him. 3,700 will go towards furniture and appliances. 2,900 will go towards utilities, water, cable, internet, and insurance. 5,000 will go towards house supplies, clothes, and food. And the rest of the money will go into a joint bank account that Eric can access and I can monitor. I want to make it clear that none of this fundraising money will be used by me. This is strictly Eric's money. So now, I'm going to surprise Eric with the house and give him a tour. Hope you guys enjoy it. So, this is Eric's new house. Um, it's pretty empty in here. We're in the living room right now. We're gonna go out, get new furniture, get new appliances, get whatever a house needs, and we're gonna fill it up. So, uh, can't wait. Excited. Let's do this. Nigeria. For a homeless man, no, not before relative. You know in Nigeria, it is when somebody does this for his own mother, they go and put it in newspaper, they put it in television, uh, that actress something something, bought the house for the mother, or actress something something, build the house for the father. But this one, just somebody passing by a homeless man, it, it doesn't have to be your own money because this thing is not the man's own money. But just taking advantage of in social media, social media, you know, reaching out to, to you know to other people. Other people might be willing to contribute, and that is what this guy has done. You know, he is buying a house for a homeless somebody that he doesn't know from Adam. Where is that kind of Christianity in Nigeria? Where is that kind of Christianity? How many pastors are preaching that? That every member should be willing to do this. Where is this Christianity in Nigeria? Oh, where is this love for God in Nigeria? Where is this love for man in Nigeria? It's only about taking from other people, taking advantage of other people, not creating opportunity. But by the grace of God, if God will let me go from this country, 
and release me, you will see this thing will become known by the grace of God. We are going to bring it to Nigeria. This is the kind of Christianity we are going to bring to Nigeria. This thing, we will bring it to that country. Africa will change. This deceptive Christianity that we have today, this counterfeit Christianity that is ready in Africa today, he is going to give room for this real Christianity in the name of Jesus. Let's go. Carrying furniture here. They are not laborers, oh. They are not laborers, oh. They are businessmen on their own. They are working, they are working, they are working. These are the people who are helping it. They are coming to work as laborers for a homeless man. Can you see a rich man in Nigeria? A rich man they carry, is carrying furniture like this, furniture, and then setting it up for the homeless man so that not he, the rich man, the big man will live there, but the homeless. <laughs> The homeless man is the one that will live there. And he's not hiring his workers to come and do it. Though. They are the ones doing it themselves. Where is that kind of love? Where is that kind of Christianity in Nigeria? It is that kind of Christianity that we must bring back. It is that kind of Christianity that we are talking about. These are the things I'm saying. That love is action. These are the things that God should ex is expecting from all of us. And these are the kind of Christianity that we all must be willing to give out. This is the example of Christianity. If you are around me, anybody that is around my house here, this is what I try to instill into people. Now I saw today the success. I don't need to tell him anything. He himself is the one running to do anything that he sees any need, he's running to do it. Before, you have to be telling them, go and help that lady now. You see the lady, and for, for people like Victor, I still have to talk to him one time. I mean, sometimes. But or some of them, most of them, you don't need to remind them again. They are the one running about to help other people right now. Because that is the way Christianity is. If you are not living that kind of life, you are not a Christian yet. Your Christianity is not practical. Your Christianity is not practical. Your Christianity is dormant. Your Christianity is dead. What are you doing for human beings on your own? These people are not doing yanga, they are not doing yoga or ga. They see needs, they meet it by themselves. This is the kind of Christianity we need to bring out. We need to bring back to our nation. Let's go, please. Can you preach Christianity more than this? And I said, I'm going to do this in Africa. And people are telling me, they said, how are you going to solve the Boko Haram problem? I said, this is the way I want to solve Boko Haram problem. And they are telling me, Pastor Sunday, you don't go walk. They are, the Muslims are too bad. The headsmen are too bad. I said, I'm going to build for them what they want. If they are headsmen, I want to build for them a ranch. If they are Muslim Boko Haram, I want to meet with the Boko Haram people. And say, what do you want? You want mosque? Where do you want the mosque to be located? I will build you your mosque. You want school, Islamic school? Let me build it for you. I want, this is love. It is this kind of gospel that will shake everybody's heart. This is the way to preach the gospel. That is why when I'm planning to go to Nigeria, I want to do an announcement. I want to do crusade. Crusade for thieves. I want to go on national newspaper, national television, and say, all oh, I'm robbers. I am your friend. I need you to come, and I'm guaranteeing you. See, police, they has given, I will sign a contract with the police that they will not arrest anybody. 
Come and meet me. Is it not money you want? Eh? Hey, come and tell me what you want. Let's talk. Just drop that risky business for you. Drop arm robbery. You don't need to put your life into risk. I'm going to give you what you need. Let's make, let's bring you back to life. All those children that are selling in the street and running about, we will do something about it. This is the way to preach the gospel. This is the kind of Christianity that I don't understand. And this is the kind of Christianity I'm bringing to Nigeria. So anybody that wants to know what is Pastor Sunday about, this is what I'm about. And it's not just about me doing everything. I want to preach this thing. I want everybody to understand the kind of Christianity we are talking about. I want everybody to understand the kind of gospel we are talking about. I want everybody to be beginning to do it in their own little way. No, maybe you are not going to be, be able to buy a house. Maybe you are not going to be able to take care of any. But it must not be accidental things. I know sometimes it happens. There is somebody they call Olaju Mokel or something, who is the, the bread seller. You know, one incident, the whole country is talking about it for a year. Nonsense, rubbish. Those kind of things should be happening every day in the thousands. Those kind of things should be happening in are thousands every day if we have Christians in that country. If you have Christians in Nigeria... Who are well taught about the tenets of, of love, about the concept of love. We should be having those on like Jumoke bread seller. We should be, everybody should just be doing it everywhere. It should be a, a, a normal occurrence. Like this one now, it should be no more occurrence. I don't know if there's any human being who has done this before in Nigeria. This is Christianity. This is what Christianity stands for. And this is what we are all supposed to do. Go. That's why I'm going to Africa. God is going to allow me to go to Africa. Even if he's not going to allow me to go, at least I'm talking now. I'm sharing with you what I, I mean by Christianity and what kind of Christianity I believe in. So even if I die here and I don't go, at least my word will remain. At least somebody will catch it. Somebody will understand this and say this is what Christianity is. Not what Oyedepo is practicing. Not what Adeboye is practicing. Not what um, uh, Mountain of Fire is practicing. Not what Oyakilome is practicing. Those are pseudo Christianity, they are not Christianity, they are deceptive Christianity, Christianity that is only taken from people and not given to the less privileged. Those are not Christianity, this is the Christianity that we are talking about. Let's go, please. Yeah, I've got that in. Let's get a good dinner going. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> awesome. I'll give you some money. Yeah, at that point. They got the car for the guys. I need to go to my house and grab something real quick. Um, you never, you never been to my house. No. Okay. So maybe you could Stop. see how that. <laughs> the guy is taking him to his house. No teeth. Nothing. He's taking him, and he's a he's a homeless guy. He's not afraid. He's not living under fear. That you see the kind of car the guy is using. You know, the guy is well to do. He's not taking him to his house and say, hey, I'm afraid though. If I take him to my house, I don't want him to come in the night oh, and be, come and rob you. In Nigeria, they would have put so much fear in you that you would be afraid to take a homeless person to your house because you took, you know for sure that they will bring armed robbers to come and rob you at night. Because they will do it, of course, in Nigeria because of the lack of value system. That's why we must return value system. That's why we must return love so that they will not even have to think about... Because by the time you do this kind of good to this guy, he will not think about bringing armed robbers. <laughs> The guy just turned. He just turned. They told him, This is your house. Welcome home. This is your house. And they already put his picture there for him. He said, Go to, Come to my house. Then it became his house. <laughs> what a miracle working God we serve. This thing should be happening left, right, and center in Nigeria. This is Christianity that we will bring to Nigeria. Oh God, hear my cry. Hear my cry, heavens. Oh God, hear my cry and let this message get to Nigeria. Oh Lord, let Nigeria experience this kind of Christianity. I pray, Father, hear the cry of Nigeria. Hear my cry. Help me. Help us to get this message to Nigeria, my God. 
But Nigerians have money to do this. Nigerians have more money to do this. But all the money they are taking in them to church, all the money they are taking it to geo, all the money they are taking to only few people. We had more people are getting poorer every day. You know, you can't be right. Come on, oh, big bro. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you see love? You see love? Love broke the guy down. Love will melt any heart. Love will break anybody down. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Love will break any study heart. Love will change any robot. Upon the continent of Africa, we release this grace 
upon our nations across the world, not just in Africa, but across the nations of the earth. We release this grace, Father. Oh, Father, go and raise up sons. Raise up sons across the land. Raise up sons across the nations. Raise up sons that will be of your spirit. Oh, let a new generation of ministers arise. Oh, a new generation, generation of sons of God. A new generation of God children that will be identic identical to God Almighty. Identical to you, my father. <laughs> raise them up. Oh, raise up new generation of Christians. My God, my father. Raise them up, O oh Lord. Raise up a new generation of Christians like the apostles of old, like the missionaries that came to Africa to give their lives to you. Oh, let us become this kind of Christians, oh dear Father. Put your love and your zeal in our hearts again. Oh, I'm working, quicken your love, quicken your zeal in our hearts and in our soul. Oh, Jesus. He ya yala, he ya yala, he ya la ra ya yala kaya. Who your Lord? Oh, yala bise. He kelebo, who korobosa. He yala beke. Lift our people out of abject poverty. Please lift up our people. Give hope to our people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Help me, Lord, to be able to accomplish this thing in Africa. Amen. Jesus. Oh, thank you because you will do it. A new dawn is coming upon our land. A new dawn is coming upon Africa. <laughs> you are praising up and it's a new day. I see a new day. I see a morning, the dawning of a new day. I see a dawning. A dawn of a new day, my father. I see a sunrise across the continent of Africa. I see light coming. Don't take the place of darkness. I see the graduality of that light. Just like the morning break. The light that breaks in the morning. I see the light breaking. I see it, my God. I see it, my father. Ah! Iya, Iya la bakura kira boroko babu kuri Iya leke mela meki yamuri ya baba ya. Father, I send this light to the Muslims. I send this light to the Muslims in my country. Father, they will see a great light. They that see it in darkness, they will see a great light in the name of Jesus. Their eyes will open. You will reveal yourself to them, and liberty shall come to their people in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord, to you, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory to the Almighty God. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Glory to God. Wow. I have so much more things to talk about here. But I'm going to give you people the opportunity to call in now. I think the Lord might be leading some of you to begin to call in. Why their, your calls might be about to come. Let me just read the whole idea. Love is the proof of a disciple of Christ. Only love is a proof of the disciple of Christ. You know, the proof of love is keeping his commandment. 1 John 2, 3 to 5. Uh, 1 John 3, 14 to 18. Love is actions revealing God's care. For his creation. First John 3 24. By keeping his commandment, we abide in him, fellowship with his spirit. First John 4 7. Love is a decision to put premium in God's creation. First John 4 8 to 12. God is love. In loving, we become like him. John 13 34 to 35. Love is proved or demonstrated by the willingness to listen. You pay attention. To someone you care about. John 13, 3 to 5. Yes. John 13, 3 to 5. You dis demonstrate love by creating pleasure to those you love. You don't just want to get, but you want to give and pleasure them above all. Uh, yeah. Uh, you go and read the scriptures at home. Go and read the scriptures at home. But uh, there are so many things to say. So that let me see. Let's, let's receive a call from the caller. Who is the caller? Is you have a caller there? Yeah, go ahead, please. 
Hello, who is the caller? Hello, good evening, dear sir. Yes, please. Who is calling, please? Good evening, sir. Yes, make you talk now. Speak, we are hearing. Clearly. Talk, yes, talk. Sir. Okay, okay. Another wonderful evening, sir. No, I make bullshit, don't I? Go ahead and speak. Hello. Okay, okay. Yeah, my name is Adetola. I'm calling from Germany. Make you talk now, nah, Adetola. Yeah, we bless God for this night. So sorry, sir. So sorry, I couldn't hear you. We bless God for this night, sir, and the whole week. It's been a wonderful week. Um, I just want to let you know that God is listening to you, is hearing you as much as, you know, much more than even you could cry out to him. Um, I, I didn't plan to share this, but I'm going to share it with you. Um, at the beginning of last year, I made up my mind that if I'm able to lose some weight for some, uh, some kilo, I'm going to go for a photo shooting. But on Thursday, I was at work. And the Spirit of God just ministered to me and said, no, there's nothing like photo shooting, even if you have achieved, you know, the weight you are designed for. Why don't you give that money to the orphanage? And on this platform, we have a sister, you know, we have a sister that have, you know, a group. And she has written me something like that, that, you know, that she has someone in Nigeria to go to an orphanage in one of the evil land and check what is the situation there. And, you know, she sent me some picture of it and all that. By the grace of God, God lay it in my hands, and, and I said, okay, if that is the way it is, why not? Um, this is what we have been learning. This is what we are, God has been teaching us through DSA, and, you know. So just to tell you that even, you know, God is ministering to us, remembering us of messages that we are preaching, even when we want to take some actions or we want to go ahead and do some things. God is telling us, you know, to love and to share whatever. I don't want to wait until I become a billionaire or millionaire. I want to share every little penny that God has given to me with people. And this is what happened during the week, you know, which God lay in my heart. And I've called the lady, I told her, I want to invest the money in the, in the life of those children rather than using it for necessary things. And this is, we should just start in our little way. We shouldn't wait until we have the billions or the millions. We should start with every penny that God has given to us, you know, to share, to look for a need in the life of people and go ahead and do it. God bless you, sir. It's been a Thank wonderful you. week. We are getting the message. The message is going across, and God is even ministering to us one individual is, you know, to know what to do at the right time. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Adetola. Thank you so very much, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you for the testimony. Yes, let's find out who is the next person calling. And any one of you that wants to call, go to uh, Move Agents, uh, Facebook Messenger, Move Agents. One word, Move Agents, on Facebook Messenger. You will see Madik there in front of it. Move agent Madik. Okay, we have a new caller. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, you're me. How are you today? I'm, I'm, I'm fine, sir. This is your me calling from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yes. Yeah, I really thank you for this message today, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I'm in tears already. Like, I just saw, so, uh, wow. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, God demonstrates. He demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died. Demonstrate his soul. He said, God gave his only begotten soul. Love is action. Don't just, people, Nigerian Christians just talk, 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 talk. But they, they never even acted, especially a, a, a great man of God. See, when, 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 why Aruna was doing this review today, and I was just shedding tears, something just came to my mind, and God said, you know that widow that, that borrowed money from you that to pay her rent in the US? Just just send a message to her right now and say, I forgive you the money, don't pay back. And I got my phone and I sent a message to her. I'm not collecting the money back from you. Just hold it. Just take care of your daughter with it and whatever. I'm not collecting the money back. I was just shedding just like where's the practical law? Where's love? Sometimes I used to think something is wrong with me. You know, you have been, been in America for a, a while and you've not even built a, a building, you've not built a house. But I was thinking I was crazy. But where my money is going to is different. I have young ladies who are, who are supposed to be in prostitution. But I told them, just, I'm not God, but whenever you need your school fees, look up to me. Whenever you are lack, you lack food, you lack something, just look up to me. And I told my wife, this ladies needs to be taken care of. Forget about our needs, forget about our period or whatever. But these are the people God wants us to bless. 
and that's where my money goes to sometimes. Whenever I go to Nigeria and I buy stuff from little kids, and I will say, leave the chain, just, just take the chain. They will be saying thank you, sir. God bless you, prostrate. I'm, no, you should not even be doing this. You should not be doing this. Why would they put something on your head in the sun? Because I've been dead too. I've been dead too. I will walk after my school. I will walk the street. People will laugh at me. And I felt the pains that these kids are going through. Just to pay my tuition fee, I will be helping my parents to walk. So when I see these kids, I remember my whole life. I hoped I was in SS3, even during my wild days. Just to help my parents. <laughs> but Christianity in Nigeria, they are not seeing those things. They are not. They are not. They will even collect from the poor that are selling pet they are to me to see the street. They will even collect all they have. See love, homeless people, homeless pussy. See random out of kindness that people are doing. If I, I can testify, that guy might not be a Christian. He might even be a Muslim. But we Christians that we are supposed to stay standards for the world. We are not doing anything. We only talk. We only talk and talk and talk and talk. We only care about me, myself, and I. We are not even seeing the people that have needs. Honestly, I just I was just crying when Aruna was doing the review. And again, the message of today, love is, is action. I just said, no, I don't need the money, please. Don't, don't even thank me. Don't even in that God for blessing me. Leave the money alone. I give it to you. Just forget about it. How many of us, how many, how many of us can look beyond our whole personal need to help other people? Pastor, I share with you, the, my friends that, that were in need. I share with you. These are people that are holding prominent position in RCCG. I share with you. But the church could give position to people, but when the people are in need, they will not be able to help them. The guy said there is no love in African church. He said he, 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 he gathered people to, to, to go and celebrate uh, but that is Gio's uh, 76 years uh, birthday, praise and worship, and only what he could get is handshake and a hug. These people are hurting. They are going through so many stuff. No, the church are not seeing it, but they want you to be positioned. They, they want you to serve. It's disheartening. And this guy is lamenting and sharing with me, and I was just crying. Don't they know you are going through this? He, he said they know. He said he had crisis and he was accommodated. Just they, they were allowed, they allowed him and his wife and his kid to sleep in the church for two months. Two months. Why can't the church go and get an apartment and give to him? Why? Well, you can way. allow somebody to sleep in the church because you have crisis, but you cannot. The church cannot. Where is the charity organization? Where is the RCCG charity organization? You can And this is not a small person. He's holding, he's co coordinating the choristers of the Gitti, Ondo, Oshu, uh, Belkuta, Ogui, Bato, all those things. Somebody of wow. that caliber. Wow. Being reduced to that. Wow. And they cannot do anything. He said they are living in a boy's quarter right now. If he managed to gather some money, some money, he sell his computer, he sold some of his phone, he sold. I'm like, can the church do something? Are you not serving the church? He said, my brother, that there's no law. They only saw me even after I've explained my problem to them. They don't care. They are using the problem to even mock them. And I'm here, I'm just like, God, Jesus. Why? Why? And he's just begging, please. He's, he's not lazy. He's a, he's a fashion designer. He's begging. I need a broadening machine. I need this thing. Because he had crisis in Taraba State with all those killings. So he relocated to him. But the church could not help. The church could not help. So what kind of gospel are we preaching? The gospel of programs. The gospel of events. The gospel of come to pro, the pro, gospel of be, become a leader in the church. The, the gospel of take care of this uh, association. Is that what we want to preach? You guys, today is still talk with me. That please, I just want to find my way out of this country. I'm done. I'm tired. Even the church that we relied on, they can't help. And I'm like, why? They know you now. You are not a small person. If you're holding that position, you are not small. You are not. Why can't they just get in place and pay for five years? So, okay, put your wife and your kid, and the wife is pregnant. We are not, for, for, we are not talking about a homeless man, no. Just we are not saying they should do it for a homeless man, no. 
We are saying they should do it for their own coordinator of five states. Yes, pastor, their own. It's not, it's not outside that. It's not somebody from another. It's not somebody five from select. It's their own, their own. Their, I know him. I know him. We serve together. It's, I know him very well. And there will be. And if you, if you talk like, now. Are if, you not serving under this church? Don't they know about it? They know, my brother. They know. They know, but they are not doing anything. They know you slept in the church with your wife, pregnant wife, and your, your, your two year old, three year old boy, and they cannot do anything. And you are sleeping in the church. Why? And if you talk now, some people will come. Some people will come. Some people will come. They will go and do something about that. They know what I'm talking about. They know. They know. That's my submission. That's Thank my you submission. so much. Some people will come to this platform and be arguing that they are doing something every Christmas. Or they are doing, yeah, they have some one project going on there. What kind of project if you cannot take care of your own? I'm not the last person, no. These are the leaders. You cannot say you don't know him. That he doesn't go to home group. So they will say, ah, but they are doing this, so they are spending 500000 every year. You don't tell me that you, they don't have anything to take care of, that they don't have, I mean, and they have houses in that camp. They could have been able to help in that the camp or do something. They could do anything. I mean, even some people donate houses for them, to them. Some people donate cars, houses. They give houses, land. Can you use that to you to help your own? Hello? Hi, Pastor uh, DSA. Yes. See Sandra again. Yes, Sandra. Yes, it's always good to call because uh, every time we call is because something, a part of my life is touched, and I'm sure that it's touching every other person. Um, if this is what we give our time to, it's worth doing because uh, first, I want to thank you, and secondly, I want to give you a good news. I want to give God, our Father in heaven, a good news. I got a phone call yesterday, but I was not able to pick, but I picked today. And these uh, women that we've been supporting, I told you that we've been paying for pregnant women in Nigeria to register their pregnancy in the healthcare system, and also be able to vac give vaccination to their children. Yes. Uh, I got a phone call today, and one of the ladies got the baby, a healthy baby. Amen. And the mother is fine, and the baby is fine. Amen. So when I see what is happening, uh, the, the, the video you showed about a homeless man being helped by people, that is the heart of God. Yes. And just today, every Saturday I have radio preaching, 3 o'clock Stockholm time. So I want to first apologize to you and also tell you that I'm reading your books, uh, Kingdom Driven Life. Uh, life yes. And that's what I use in preaching. Yes. So... <laughs> Why should, you, why should you apologize? Uh, no, why I, should you apologize for that? Sir? Why should you apologize for what? No, I want to tell you because sometimes it's good to ask first, uh, so that you hey, know. Me that I'm uh, saying. Because I've been reading that book. Uh, me that I'm telling you people that go and use all my material. Now you become apologize. Go and use anything yes. you want to use. Go and sell it okay, and, make, sir. and make money for yourself, sir. Okay, I'm thinking about that. I have to call and talk with you about that because I have so many of your books. I've not read all of them. I have people coming to my home. I keep giving them books to Make read. Make you the uh, same. Of mine who just came, a taxi driver. I gave him. A, he took the book. Make you the. They, they are not for free. You the make you the sell. Like, I <laughs> Sell it and make money for yourself. Order more here. We are going to give you, send you more. Be selling them, make money. You order Amen. more. Uh -huh. You order more, then you get to earn more. Yes, yes. I'm going to do that, sir. So I just wanted to call and uh, tell you that uh, the, the, this love is is so different because since we've been listening to your preaching. And just before then, in my working place, I do speak with uh, nurses and in the uh, workers and things, but something different now in my working place because uh, my colleagues, they come to me in my office. Uh, these are non-believers, Muslims too. And they come to ask for advice from me, which never happens before. <laughs>
So I give them advice and things, and they go and they come back and they tell me, but how did you know this? And I just tell them it's God. Uh, but I tell them about the Lord, but at the same time, I also teach them how to show love. It's not by making sacrifice uh, or making uh, some funny prayers. So when they see the love that we carry, they want to have that love. And that's what we saw today. People don't have to be just believers to understand what love is. And now as believers, we are seeing the heart of God, the love that God is showing through even unbelievers, like the man of yesterday, who, who, who put himself on the mud and was trying to save a couple. I think that this is really, we are so, uh, sorry for my English because of the Swedish language, but I don't know what, I'm short of words. I am so grateful and thankful. I just want to share the joy, just to hear that one woman has a healthy baby because of being registered and things. Beautiful. It's good. And if you are living in, Stock, if you are living in Stockholm area, and you are watching this, listening to this program. Uh, if they want, uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, some of them do listen to the radio preachings. I hear people calling me. And I have to tell you that if you really want to stand with us too, you can also stand. Uh, for me, it's mostly for the pregnant women, the homeless women, the widows, and also for couples or families who have seven, eight children who cannot even afford to pay for their house rent. We did that for one man with eight children last month. He was supposed to be outside. Sleep. He was sleeping, actually sleeping in the church house. So we supported him with that. Even, yes. So because, I just want to thank you, sir. Beautiful. Thank you, Sandra. You are doing well. Thank you so much. Blessings. You're welcome, sir. Thank yeah, you, sir. Bye. Now, see what Sandra is talking about. She, they saw people sleeping, a man with the children sleeping in the church. Even in that uh, RCCG, let's say the RCCG couldn't help the man that is sleeping in the church and he does something. But why is it that people from that church, because they have not been taught, somebody, I'm sure there is somebody who could have been able to take care of, that, of those families, one person himself. But because they have not been taught love, nobody is responding. Please go ahead. Hello, dear sir. Yes, it is that Idorain. Hello. Hello, dear sir. Yes. Idorean. Yeah, Idore, we are hearing you, please. Just speak louder. All right. Thank you so much for this teaching on love. Um, be, uh, my heart's just beating fast. Sorry. I'm just in tears and I'm just all overwhelmed. And I, I want to say that today, um, just to share that what you're teaching is reality. And if people, if people can apply it, like love, love is action, they will really see that the heavens will back them. Yes. I'm, a, I'm an A&E doctor, and I used to, I love to do health talk. I love to, since I was in school, I love to talk to people about their health, just to give them awareness that this is what your body, this is what is going on. But when I came to this country, I keep saying, oh, I'm busy, work will not let me, I can't do it, oh, where will I get the time? But when I started last, when, we, when I started being on this platform, I said, I've got to bring my passion back to reality. And I started the Health Gospel page, which I just talked to, I just share topics like hypertension, what is it, um, your diabetes, what is it, what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to look for, how to prevent it. Do you know what happened here, say? Yeah. The job I was doing, because it was taking all my time, I was called and, I, somebody, and they said to me, do you want to come and do this job? It's Monday to Thursday and you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. And I said, yeah, and that job has no night. It has just the day, Monday to Thursday. And I'm like, is this not God? Because I do this health talk on Sunday. And I was always saying, where do I get time to do it? So I got that job since in August last year. And I've been doing that job. The person that was on the job left, and they just gave me the job. I've been doing that job Monday to Thursday. So I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Beautiful. Where I do the, the health talk every Sunday evening. Beautiful. <laughs> I, 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 what you're saying is the reality. When you start, when you sacrifice and not give excuses, God just makes 
the way for you to do it. Yes. God just gives you that platform. Last two weeks, I was at work, and somebody posted something on Facebook, and he said, oh, I wish I had 5,000 naira to give this woman whose two children cannot go back to school because of 5,000 naira. Naira. The two children are in Lagos. They can't go back to school. And the thing just moved me. And we're How many Christians this do we have in Lagos? So I went on her messenger and I said, I'm interested about these children. And she says, it's only 5,000 that the mother washes plate for one restaurant. And the money she gets only fits them. She cannot get any extra. I said 5,000 naira is not even up to 10 pounds. Hmm. And I just said, please, Forget send me your account number. I sent her money. She said, it's too much. I said, give it to her. And she gave it to the woman. She said, I'll make sure. They took the children to school last week. She sent me pictures. The mother was just crying. I don't know her. Wow. So she took the children to school, two young boys, they registered, they wore the school uniform, they sent me pictures. They said, the woman said, I should send you these pictures. I said, I don't want to connect. I don't want to. I'm just happy that the two boys have gone back to school. Yes. I, I just wish that we can understand what you're teaching us. And um, I really know that people are understanding because when you have the heart, you will see the need. And you will meet the need without anybody asking you to meet it. You will just see the need and you will just meet it. Even if you don't have, when the need comes, you will see it. God brings these things to ourselves every day. And we are here to do these things. This is practical Christianity. I just want to say thank you so much for bringing back this Christianity to us. God bless you. Thank you so very much, Dora. I want to also remind people that for those who want their children to come for HMT for the children, the Doreen is the coordinator. So if you want your children to come here for the HMT in summer, uh, get in touch with the Doreen or register uh, on a platform on my blog, sundayadilajablog.com slash visit. Hello? Hello. Yes, please. Hello, good evening, dear sir. Yes, sir. Who is calling yes, from? Is who is calling from this where? Pastor Julius from London. Oh yeah, it's been a while. How are you, sir? You, your, your telephone is making some noise. Is, is that you are moving or something? Can you uh, just yeah? Let's so that we can hear you very well. Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, dear say you will live long. You will definitely live long by the grace of God to mm -hmm. um, actualize this dream and this vision that God has given unto you. Amen. Uh, you know why? Because um, even me, um, like five, uh, six years ago when my father passed away, I, uh, because I had to fight some battles, because I fought for my father at that time, I, can, I cannot go to the to the to the nitty gritty of the details, uh, but I was challenged when um, I was to go for his funeral. I actually died. I I, I was I, I was in a dream. I I died, and I was in that dream. I was very I was very happy because I was being taken away. I was being taken away because I was in the midst of my brethren, and I saw my spirit going going away, and I was waving. I was waving to them. But all of a sudden, a hand from above hmm. came and pushed me back down and hmm. said, your work is not completed yet. Wow. That is when I woke up. Hmm. That is since then, I have been fighting for the legacy of the family because the Lord told me, he said, what you are fighting for right now, what I want you to do is a ministry. And that ministry is actually to bring the company that died Bring it so, up again. And I want to tell you something, BSA. Yes, sir. Every business is in Nigeria. Any business, when they die, when the promoter die, that is the end of that business. You are right. There is, there is no continuity. Mm. There is no prudence in the planning. Mm. And the old system in Nigeria has collapsed. So, what you are doing is God sent. 
because you have to, Nigeria itself has collapsed. And it needs somebody to bring it up, the heart of God. So what you are doing is the heart of God, and you are trying to revive Nigeria. There is going to be, there's, there, is, there are going to be opposition, as you have been fighting them. But God will prevail for you. Amen. My second example is when my wife and I went to Mauritius two years ago. Yes. And usually we like to um, evangelize and all that, even though we go for holiday. And um, on a Sunday, we tried to go to a church. And when we got to that church, as we were leaving, the pastor came out of the church and said, guys, what are you guys doing? Can you please come home with us? Wow. Uh, yes, come home with us. We want you to come and have lunch with us. No. And yes, it does it. I've never been, we've never been to Mauritius before. Nothing. So, okay, reluctantly, we just felt, you know, we felt a bit uneasy. And we trek to his house. And by the time we got home, we got to his house, lunch was made available. The family came out. We had, uh, after we had the lunch, we had fellowship together. After fellowshipping together, he said, what, well, you know what? Would you guys, do you mind coming to, from the, to, for the evening service with us? And we went for the evening service, and they invited us to come and minister there and there. And we ministered. And the testimony is, after the service, the, they were looking at us like angels. And one of the, one, a, 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 a lady came to us and said that her husband would like us to join them for dinner. And I was thinking, what is this all about? Apparently, the previous day, we were looking for a place to evangelize. We went to the city center. Now, we never knew that they, they, they were watching us in the city center. The husband of this woman is the commissioner of police. And he, he, he saw us in the city center. And funny enough, and, and coincidentally, we went to the same church. So when, when, I was, uh, when we were asking questions, and, and the lady told us, you know what, my, my husband is the commissioner of police. Wow. And he saw you guys in the city center and um, he's interested in you. Wow. Uh, as, uh, I thought, what? So what am I saying? When your light is shining, hmm. you don't know who is looking at you. Hmm. Now, the whole world is looking at you. Hmm. Those who are in darkness, they will come to your light Amen. in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name. Continue what you are doing by the Spirit of the Lord. Hmm. There is so much for me to say. I came back, we came back from Nigeria on, tu uh, on Tuesday. Okay. This week. Now, as we are coming back, I don't usually do this at the airport. I, the police came to me. Oh, Oga, what can you do? Uh, what do you have for us? I gave him money. Okay. I gave him a thousand naira. Before you knew it, all the police ran that place. They left their position with their guns to come and be asking me for money. My God. I'm telling you, this is at the airport. Oh. Okay? Okay? And I was giving them. Wow. And I, I felt bad at the end of the day because these are the people carrying the whole nation authority on their shoulder. Hmm. Begging, they reduce themselves to 1,000 naira each. No. Yes, sir. Now, what is going on in Nigeria? Nigeria needs fixing. Hmm. You need help. I was in the church uh, three weeks before that in London. Now, we had a conference in that church. The title of the, uh, of, the, of the conference was Greater Works. Yes. Now, another big minister, I will not make mention of his name, he came in. What did he minister on? The power of the tithe. After 10 minutes, I could not stand that message. I had to walk out of the church. Now, what am I saying? I have to snatch my life back. And I'm praying and I'm asking every Christian out there 
to snatch their life back from the false gospel, Amen. From the false doctrine. Beautiful. That this thing has hidden into every man's heart, every African's heart. It is like double your money. When you are coming to a church, you are talking about the power of tight. You are talking about 24 hours miracle. You are talking about a thousand better to be a, a, a millionaire seed. I, I cannot believe that people actually believe in these things. And people are coming out to sow seed. And I, all I can see is that the greedy is ministering, is ministering to the greedy. And the whole nation has become corrupt because of the because of the gospel of greed is eating away Nigeria, and people are not. And, and I'm praying that people would snatch their life back from all this false doctrine, because that will never resolve the issue of Nigeria. One person cannot solve it. It takes togetherness, and everybody. And what these people are doing, they are building empire. And they are using some tokens, reaching out to some people. Yes, they do reach out, but you, they need to live a life whereby they can give their life for the gospel. They are not giving their life to the gospel. My they God. are only giving a fraction of their substance. Wow. Do you understand? But someone like you now, I, 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 one time I wanted to turn away. Why? Because I don't like the three o'clock um, message with that, that my wife does. But I have to weigh up all the options. If you are ready to give your life for Jesus, these people are not ready to give their life to Jesus. They are only giving a fraction of their token in order to cover up. And I, 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 I'm sick of it. Wow. If you are ready to leave your comfort zone in, U in Ukraine and say that bye bye to this thing, bye bye to that, I have searched these ministers and I cannot see them saying, I'm going to give my life for this thing. I cannot see it. Honestly, uh, I have worked with them, I have mixed with them, I have, they are my partners, I do respect them, I will never abuse them. But I just wish they can they can give their own life. I do not see it giving their they can fast, they can pray, they can give their body to be burned, but they cannot I, I see something lacking. They cannot wait. Hmm. That they cannot wait. It's in the waiting room that God can actually do his own business. Hmm. Because if no man can wait, then we have to start manipulating people. And that is what people still seem to think that waiting is fasting, waiting is uh, waiting is praying. No, Job said, "I will wait until my changes come." It means that you will be in a position. Look at you, DSA, ten years. You are the fighting case in, in in Ukraine. Now, any any man would have said, "You know what? Hey, let's strike a deal." <laughs> they would have. Do you understand? But you said you are going to wait. You are waiting until the change to the, until your change come. Kudos to you and thank you for doing the kingdom of God proud. Can I do what you are doing? I don't know. I don't think so. But I believe in the grace that God has given me. I'm doing bit by bit. Yes. Let all the men of God know how to really wait on God. Wait. As they need to stop manu manufacturing from doctrine what is not in the Bible and painting it and making it look real, making what is false, what is a lie real to people. And the, and the people of Africa have actually bought into what is not real. That is why you have fake things in Nigeria. Yes, sir. If, lastly, sir, I thought about it, let's say, as of the rock, for example, if they suspend two years of experience, they will be able to build and make sure that this water and electricity will build 100 or 200 meters or 500 meters of their area. Wow. That means that there will be a, there will be a light onto that place. Right now, they are darkness because nobody can see their works. 
Huh. You know, you know it's, it's such a shame that we can say that we have the biggest ministers, we have the biggest church, and we are not making change in our environment. Jesus. We are talking about, we are not making that impact. We can do it, but we are taking our eyes off it. Why would you not leave Nigeria and say you want to start a church in Dubai? It's an insult. It is an insult. If you would buy that gospel, why would you want to leave Nigeria and say you want to have a church in UK? Why? Nigeria is a mess. Fix the mess in Nigeria first. Before you say you want to take your gospel to Dubai, that is already settled. I don't know. I don't know what is going on in their hearts. Wow, wow, wow. You are but saying some I, powerful, powerful stuff. Please continue. But I believe that, dear say, that by the grace of the living God, by the power of the one that called you, it will put a edge of protection around about you and your team. Amen. In order to see this work stand in the name of Jesus, because that is my heart now. I pray and I'm asking all believers, take your life back. Take the kingdom back. Don't be sold. Don't die. I mean, take your life from those who have put a blanket of false gospel right about you. And about, remove that veil of darkness from your life. Otherwise, you are we are going to rot. If you don't want to rot, take away, snatch your life back from all these false gos uh, false uh, false uh, teachers. That is what I have to say. Is my now my preaching? I'm losing friend because I did say to you last year. I said I am going to make some step. I am going to take. I'm going to stand out. I am. I'm, I'm, I have decided that, and I have stood up. And now, even the people that used to call me pastor, they call me. They call. Me, they call me by my name now. I don't care about that because Nigeria cannot be rotten. Africa cannot be rotten. And I call myself a pastor. Huh. What kind of a pastor am I? My what, kind of, what kind of a calling do I have for my head? Huh. What kind of Jesus am I preaching? Hmm. What kind of conscience do I have? Huh. How can I call myself Jesus. the minister of the gospel? Jesus! I that is completely dirty. And that is not the Jesus that I have read about. And that is not the Jesus that put his hand, say, your work is not completed yet. It is not, it is not my pastor that called me. It is not, it is not my pastor that called me. It is God that called me. Yes. So people need to know that. Lastly, lastly, sir, in, when I went to Nigeria, I had a revelation. Yes, sir. A pastor, my senior pastor from a long time ago, was looking for me. He had an accident in his leg. Hmm. And I was wondering, why is he looking for me? He said, they said to me, he said, because I'm the only one that have an experience in this area to deal with it, to deal with the issue. Okay. And I showed up to his house. His family were there. So I grabbed... I got, I, I saw his leg, and I held up, and I grabbed his legs, his leg, and I was praying. As I was praying, as I was praying, my voice started to faint away. Hmm. I could not hear myself. Huh. I know what I was talking about. So, all of a sudden, I stopped praying. And I said to him, Pastor, have you been raising offering? Because if you have been raising offerings, there are some people that can get away with raising offering in the church. Some people will not get away with it. And I looked at him, and he could not look at me. And I said, and I asked him again, have you been raising offering that God has not asked you to raise? Huh. He could not look at me. So I said, well, and in that, in that revelation, I started to say, you know, I started to quote Titus 2, verse 11. For the grace of God, has appeared to all men, teaching us that to de deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly at this, uh, this present age. Now, what is it? 
And as I was quoting it, I now woke up. Do you understand? The issue of the accident of the leg is because people have got, they are now, they have gotten into prosperity messages hmm. that God has not sent them. Hmm. And they are now having accidents, spiritual attacks. Oh, oh, oh. Do you understand? Hmm. They are now getting affliction from God hmm. because of the message that God has not sent them. Hmm. So I am praying, I am asking, if you are a pastor out there, there is nothing as such as prosperity gospel. Yeah. Nothing. It is not in the Bible. But God said, let the poor say that I am rich. Believing in the gospel in the total ability of God. And you will prosper in the word of God. Because it's a covenant keeping God. But if you try to manufacture that which is not in the Bible, this is the season that God is going to start afflicting some people. And that is where I rest my case. Wow. Thank you and God bless you, sir. Wow, wow. Oh, Jesus. You are anointed in a special way today, sir. God's grace and power is resting upon you from above. Thank Keep you, it Jesus. up, sir. Keep it up, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless Thank you. God bless you, sir. Yeah. Ooh, wow, amazing. Somebody is saying, thank God for the day I came across your, your messages, your post. And the person is also saying, thank God for the person who shared DSS message with me. And so I, I'm reading this one now, and I feel that we should tell everybody to go and share. Let all of us go and share the message right now. Please go and share as fast as possible. Because uh, hello, people... Sir. Yes, Hello. Hello. Uh, you know, so let's go and share the message, please. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. This is Olari Wangi, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Just want to contribute. Yesterday, I want to contribute, mm -hmm. but there's no time. Yeah, there is time today. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I really thank you, sir, for your message. And I just want to tell you that your message that I'm receiving from you, I did not keep it with me. I share it with people. And also, I, I practice what you are saying. Because if anybody receives your message or listen to you and said he, want to, he or she mm -hmm. want to keep it, definitely that person, if, even if God come down today and say anything, or you hear, you see Jesus physically, he cannot do anything. Because your message is more than, is more than my expectation. Wow. So, that is why I begin, what, even what I receive from you, what I've been, I've been going to church for, for many years, and what I've done, just because I'm listening to you for a few, few months, I have done a lot. And I begin to ask myself that, ah, what really come over me? What is wrong with me? Hmm. That because the message is different to message, and this message is clear. And what the message that is not clear, I'm, I'm just uh, what, what how people will just tell me or uh, come to church. And when I go to church, I think I, I know God because what I'm doing, going to, the reason why I'm going to church is not only me, it's many people, even people that are listening to, to you now. They go to church because they want to receive from God. They you go to church to pray, oh God, protect me. Uh, don't let anything happen to me. I want to be a millionaire. I want to, uh, another job. I want this. And begin to give money to church. And I neglect many things. I neglect many things. I begin to cry. I begin to say, God, if I die, and so I will just come to you and you will just tell me you don't know me. Because you you already don't you already give me what I need to 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 invite the life. You give me what I need to 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 do to use to give to people to help people. So if a pastor uh, Sunday is not coming out today, and I know it's, it's by by coming out for you to come in out, it's not your power. It's because God wants to deliver people. Yes. Because God know that ever we just empty at the last day. Hmm. That is why you are here today. Yes. That is why you are saying this. And anybody on this platform, we should go and, and see a pastor who says somebody came to him and said, I don't know what to do to God. I don't know. I'll be going to church and I give you, I, I have this 10,000. I give it to church. So, and church used it to build canopy outside. So, and what that canopy used for? And I say, ah, ah. But these people don't listen to Pastor Sunday. 
How can you? How can you? We have ten thousand. The ten thousand that you can, we can eat to use to help people. People that cry. People. Some people don't have house. Some people don't have don't have jobs. Some people need just a little money to eat. Ten thousand. Ten thousand dollar. Wow. Ten thousand dollar. And the pastor go and you say. And when I talk people and I, sometimes something happened in the church and I went when I begin to listen to you last year. So things begin to change in my life and I went to I went to pastor and, and pastor say I said people are complaining. A lot of people when I go to them I, I hear they are complaining. I don't have a problem, but what people say and they say don't worry. Uh, members' opinion doesn't count. Whatever leader wants to do that I say ah oh ah, okay I say I'm done. Gine I say, I'm done no. Ah how can you say members? What opinion members say is not mean anything. That whatever leader wants to do that, that is how the uh, whatever uh, the, not be the member they bring anything. the money. And I say ah. I come away. I say, okay, I'm done. From today, I'm. I, I, it's enough. It's enough. Not be the member. They bring money. I'm, I'm telling you, sir. That is so. I did not. If I lie, God is my witness. It. If because I just want to. I, I just want to come to you. So you cannot. I'm not. I didn't lie. You. This is what I hear. And I begin to see many, many things. I say, ah, God. Before I used to go to prayer meeting, what did I go there for? To pray or to do this? And because that's what they told me, come to church if you want to know God. No, I say no. And since I've been listening to you, I know many people that I'm helping now in many ways. And I just stop that rubbish thing that I'm doing. I work so I can get money to, 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 to increase my ministry, to help my ministry to do for people that, because. Sir, I just want to tell you, every time I'm going to work or I'm in the work, my wife will call me. Ah, we know you are listening to Adela. We just want to say hi. How are you? And every time I'm listening to you, something will just come to my mind and say, congratulations, Larry. Because I know that God loves you. That is why you came across this man. Hmm. If not, I, everything, every time I'm listening to you, I'm going to work, I'm driving, something will just say, congratulations. You are part of them. So definitely, God sent you to deliver like people like me. Hmm. People, I'm telling you, sir. Hmm. So every, any, everybody that listening to you now, we should go and do something. If you cannot say you love God and go to church every Sunday, every Friday, Monday to Friday, just because these people just want to get money from you. Waste your time. The time that you are yes, supposed sir. to be investing to increase the kingdom, to bless people, yes, to sir. do good work. I'm, I'm telling you, sir. I just want to say a very big thanks to you too, because I cannot pray for you. God already prayed for you. I'm still living. But I'm just telling you, sir, that you, in my whole entire family, my wife, myself, my children, we, I send your message. For people who want to who want to listen to it, can listen. It's not by fault. But I save it because of my children, because I don't want my free children to be brainwashed. Yes. I want them to watch it. So they can know that, okay, so I have, I, my father and my daddy have done his part to save our soul. That is why I save it. So we Beautiful. watch it together. We do every, and I tell them every time, please, you, when you grow up, share your money to, when you see homeless people, when you see people in need, give your money to them more. Forget about rich. If God has made you to rich, you will rich. That one is all the essential. If God wants, whatever area God wants you, he will put you there. But don't use your money to where you don't know what is happen happening to it. Give the money to the needy, to the poor, to help people, to do whatever, just to promote the kingdom of God. Wow. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Somebody is saying that if I had died before I met the SA, I would have made it to heaven. And many people are saying the same thing. That Christianity is just coming alive now for them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm inviting people to the mentorship. If you are not on the mentorship yet, go and join. SundayAdilajahBlog.com uh, slash mentorship. And these books that you are seeing, you can also get them as well by going to the blog. SundayAdilajahBlog.com slash books. Or you can write to DSA's books at gmail.com. And then if you want to come to Ukraine for the HMT or for the children's HMT, go to the blog as well. SundayAdilajahBlog.com slash visit. Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Greetings, DSA. Pastor Nero? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you so much for this message. This, this message is a call to action. Hmm. It's a call for us to, we, we cannot just sit down and just hear this message and do nothing anymore. We have no, we have no long, we have no more excuse. And, and the reason why I called, I wanted to call is that, is, is there something that we can start now in Nigeria 
um, as it pertains to, you know, we hear about the um, the poverty, um, the poverty problem. Also, the one that's really moving me is um, children that are not in school. Because um, what I'm saying that is because um, I am not really well connected. I'm not really well connected in Nigeria like that. Everyone I know, if you give them money, they will just use it for themselves. No, if so, you um, if you can get in touch with Anu and Victor. I know he's feeding people. Being here in Ukraine as a student, he's feeding people all over Nigeria. And Victor is sending them back for thirty dollars for a whole year. Okay. So he's doing it in many states, not just in Nigeria, uh, in the uh, Western states, still all over Nigeria. So if you can get those two people, you are you are covered. Oh, okay, okay. So I, I just want to encourage everyone, and let's let's uh, we can't just hear this and not do anything anymore. We have no, we no longer have any excuse. Uh, we shouldn't just be talking. Let's just go out, find something to do, and and let's and let's make history together. Let's change. Let's change the status quo. Uh, God will help us in Jesus' name. Thank, thank you, you so sir. Thank, and thank you for the live broadcast you are doing because that's, oh, no. that is what we are talking about. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank you. Good thank job. You. Good yeah. job. And then for people who are asking, how can they call here to the program? Is go to Facebook Messenger, Facebook Messenger. And then type the word move agents. One word, move agents. Move agents on Facebook Messenger. Then you will see Matic written in front of it. That is it. And you can just say you want to call in. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, good evening, sir. Yes, who is calling from where? This is Evangelist Maria Teresa from the Glory of God Embassy. Uh huh, in Belgium. Bless you, are you hearing me? Yes, we are hearing you very well. From what country? Okay, I just called just to thank you for your great work. Uh, according to Paul, Paul said I did not come with enticing words. Yes. I uh, just want people, as many that are hearing my voice right now, I want them to know that eh, you are sent from abroad. Hmm. Why am I saying that? It's because last year, I haven't come across you, never. But... Suddenly, the Holy Ghost revealed you to me wow. last year, August. Wow. When I just traveled to Nigeria and come back for my charity work. The Holy Ghost said, I, uh, Sonda, uh, Adi, Adelaja will visit you. Hmm. You know, in that dream, but I will just stay at home. My husband can say, Adelaja is, has come. He's come, you know, you came with your luggage and so on. He said, you, you want to stay with me for some time before you go for, you know, I don't know you. To, to, to go to your own place, your own house. I said, why in my house? He said, yes, this is, here will be comfortable for you. Then you have stayed too long in abroad. So you have come now to take care of the children, the children that have misled them, you know. You were just talking to me. I said, okay, you're welcome. Then you stay here. I said, wow, what type of dream is this the Holy Ghost is trying to tell me? Wow. Then after some few days, I just come across you. You know, we are just teaching. I said, this is the Adelaide that the uh, Holy Ghost was telling me. Then when I went to sleep again, he spoke. He said, yes, that is the uh, uh, Pastor Adelaja. Wow. That's the person that came to visit you. <laughs> that you are going to Nigeria. You, you came with your luggage in my house, you know. Wow. You came with your luggage. You said that you have stayed too long in a broad man. The, people, they have, the churches have misled, misled your people, your children. So you have to go and bring them and, you know, and regain the lost year. Wow. Then in that dream, I said, wow, I said, this is true. I started following you up. Then again, he revealed you to me again. You know, I think I, I, I sent you an email. Yes. He said, he was telling me, he said, why don't you want to come? You come to my house, you knock the door. I said, who is that? He said, it's you. I said, why? He said, why don't you want to call me? What is the matter? I said, but pastor, you know, not that I don't want to call you. Maybe, you know, I'm not ready. He said, can I speak to you? You say, yes. Then I come out. We sat down all time. We started talking to him. He said, call. You know, it's very important. Call. You know, it's as if the Holy Ghost was talking to me, but you are the one. You are the same time talking to me. Yeah. So since that time, I started following you up. What I'm trying to say here, as many that are hearing your voice today, you know, they should listen to Pastor Dilaja. It is sent from above. It's not the one doing this work. I didn't know him. I haven't heard about him before. But the Holy Ghost himself revealed, re revealed him to me. So, whosoever is listening to my voice, this is the season the Holy Ghost is fighting the church. It's not Pastor Dilaja. Listen to this voice that is coming to you. I want everybody to listen to Pastor Dilaja's what is preaching. Hmm. 
Mm. Hello, sir. Are you hearing me? Very well, bye. Very well. Yeah, uh, what, what, what I want to say is that when I started my, uh, this is my ministry, charity ministry that you have been teaching, you know, it's as if you are talking to me every day. You know, I was going to churches. I was uh, having a cell meeting. I was going to winners. I was in cell meeting, a uh, minister in the cell after doing my LLDC. So the Holy Ghost was telling me that nobody will come to this cell because I have told you to stop going to that church. Wow. <laughs> you know, we, we are so kind that we don't want to hear the voice. I said, but if I stop, where am I going to go? You know, he said, nobody will come to this cell. Pastor, I'm telling you the truth. Nobody came to this cell, as the Holy Ghost told me. It is them that sent somebody to come. Or I used to go to evangelism every, every Wednesday. I will win so, but they will never come. The Holy Ghost said, you are wasting your time. I have told you that I'm not going to that place because they're not practicing what I want. You know, I will send you somebody that will teach you what I want, you know, before he reveal you to me. So what I'm trying to say, as many that are hearing, it's not all about I'm um, doing this, I'm doing that. Listening to this voice, it is from above. That is what I want to say today. Because I've been praying, I've been going to church, praying for many years, praying. Uh, because I have voice, I want, I want to hear. So I started praying, when I'm doing dedication, I will plant seed, I will do everything. One day the Holy Ghost come to me and say, do you think I'm so wicked that I cannot hear your voice or give you the baby girl? But you have eyes you cannot see. I've already given you a baby girl, but you don't want to see it. I say, well, where is the baby girl now? But I'm not pregnant. He say, you are. Then you open my eye in the realm of the spirit. He show me all the orphanage, you know, children. All the, uh, what do you call it, paralytic children. You know, he show me. He say, well, I say, but they're not mine. He said, when I died for you, when my son died for you, did I, did I, did, 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 did I say it's because of you or because of, not of you? <laughs> this is your baby girls. They are there crying for you. You know? I saw oh my God, you know? That is why I started I started preparing this, my charity organization. He said he has given me a baby girl. As many that are listening to me today, you are looking for a baby girl, you are looking for a baby boy, you are, you are looking for, to get a pregnant, whatever you are looking for. The Holy Ghost is saying that he has given you a lot. When you begin to release, begin to take care of those ones, those ones for Pastor Dilajah is saying that we should so love. You will see, you will see the blessing. Since I started following Pastor Dilajah, door has opened, I have peace, I have, you know, I'm so calm, I'm not stressful. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me every day, giving me direction. What am I trying to say? He has given us this organization, this uh, charity. He showed me the, 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 what we call it, the less privileged, the widow. They were all crying, children were suffering. I have to start preparing myself. I stopped, I, stopped, I stopped going to church. I started preparing myself. I went to Nigeria. When I wanted to go to Nigeria, I said, no, I don't like Nigeria. I was telling myself, if you go, I'm not going because it's full of darkness. They don't know love. They have misled my people. You know, it was telling me. I said, but if you say I should start charity organization, how will, when will I start? They, in London here, people are, take, they, they, they are taking care of their less privilege. He said, there will be a time that I will tell you to go. Pastor, I really went, when I went, when I go to the, uh, what do we call it, orphanage home, I went, I visit two orphanage home in Nigeria. I was crying. And the Holy Ghost gave me a sign. He said, when you go there, you will know that I'm with you. You will see two people that came from Belgium. They came also to, to help them. You know, when I go, when I went there, Pastor, we reached there, two people just come and met us. The, the children, they were so happy, you know. We were, they were, it's as if their mom came from, their mom just came, you know. They were so happy. We did whatever we can do. We went to another orphanage job again. We started interviewing the woman. So how are you managing? He said, all the churches in Nigeria, said they don't used to come. They used to go, come to, during Easter or, or Christmas time. I said, oh, how are you managing? He said, it's the Catholic uh, church that used to come every week to see that the children, the, those ones that are sick, they will take them to hospital to, you know, to meet up their need. You know, it was so sad. I was crying. Oh, you no, know, abandoned children were all. The woman who asked her, what is, what is your need? What do you really need? She still was telling me that she needs some medicine, mostly, and uh, to pay the yearly rent, you know, the yearly rent they used to pay, you know. He was telling me, we said, okay, we're going to reach her again. Then when we came back now, I have to send some money again during Christmas time because it was my birthday. I just sent money for, to them to celebrate it. They celebrated, they sent me some video, you know, just to thank me. So what I'm trying to say, Pastor, you are, you, what you are saying, it is the season. This is a season voice from Pastor Dilajah. Who's ever listening to me, please. I'm not come with enticing, enticing word, as Paul said. No matter what is happening in churches, God has revealed. There are things that I cannot say right now in this platform. But God, have, God is revealing most of them, you know. 
So I, I just want to give chance again for other people to speak. But please listen to this voice. It's not Pastor Delaja is doing it. There is somebody, it's the Holy Ghost that is doing this work and is fighting for his church. He's fighting for the less privileged. He's fighting to save his people. So may God bless all of you. Thank Are you. Are you hearing me? Thank you so much, Evangelist. Beautiful. Also, I, I, I pray that God will continue to strengthen you. Amen. Eh? Amen. Do not fear. The Holy Ghost is with you. He is the one doing it. We that can kill the flesh cannot kill the soul. It's better we do, do it that can kill the soul and the body. So praise God. Beautiful. May God strengthen you. May you continue to energize us as you are strengthening us today. Beautiful. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. People are asking for the name of the sister who called. Her name is Treasure, Treasure, Treasure Unsang. Treasure Unsang. Treasure. Just look for Treasure, Treasure Unsang. You'll see her uh, there in the comment or so. So uh, we have other callers. Let's go ahead and listen to the, the next caller here. Uh, hello? Hello, good evening. This is DJ from Abadisa. Yes, how, are you? how is Scotland? Yeah, from Scotland, sir. Good. Speak, sir. Very good. Can you speak into the speaker, right into the speaker, so that your voice can, will be clearer? Can, can you hear me? Is it okay now? Yes, it's not bad, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for, this, for today's message, sir. Okay. Uh, I, I just have a little contribution today, sir. Okay. Uh, there's something that's been uh, coming to my mind since yesterday, sir. I would just like to share it. Yes, sir. I, I can just relate the the recent revolution with the uh what is happening what happened in the uh uh, uh egypt when the god asked, i mean had the cried of the israelites that he sent moses i can see that that is the same thing that is happening now in the uh, in africa in nigeria and god has had the cry of people of africa people of nigeria and god has sent dsa to africa and, and there's a warning that that just comes to my mind that all these senior pastors, GO, bishop, if they would not allow these people of God to go, they have held them captives for years, they have robbed them of everything they have, they have robbed them of their potentials, they have robbed people of their marriages, they have robbed people of their everything they have. So to me, what is coming on my mind is just like, this is just one for them. If they would not let the people of God to go, if we would not allow the people of God to go and serve their God, Properly teach them the, the good doctrine of Jesus Christ, their destruction is very near. Ah. That is my contribution, sir. Wow, strong, strong word. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Bless, Blessing. Okay, we have other callers still. So let's uh, go ahead and welcome the other callers. Um, so, who is that? Where are you? Uh, glad to hear from you. So for those of you who are there who have not shared the message, let's go ahead and share it and invite our people to come and join us. <coughs> All right, here we are. So go share the message. Hello, Hello, DSA. Hello sir, who is this? This is this is Raphael. Raphael, how are you, sir? Fine, sir. How, happy, sir. how is Italy? Italy is cool. It's just the cold. We are happy. We are enjoying the platform. <laughs> you know, somebody somebody wrote on the platform where you mentioned that somebody wrote and said, if I had not been listening to DSA, I would have I would have gone to hell. Yeah. I also made the same comment, sir, because. If not that I got connected to DSA, uh, if I had died before I connected to you, I'm not sure I would have made heaven. Hmm. Hmm. Because uh, a lot of things have been transformed in my life. Hmm. You know, it's just like there is something I have I was propagating before, this uh, issue of Biafra and all that, uh, uh, breaking away from Nigeria, because I come from the eastern part of Nigeria. Okay. So I have been a propagator of Biafra and all that. You know, some of your messages have transformed my ideas completely. It has, it has brought love into my soul, into my being. So my life has been really completely re 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 rejuvenated. I don't know how to put it. Because I connected with... I have things. a lot, for some reasons, I have a lot of Biafra people coming on the platform. 
And I yes. want to tell them that it is not that they are trying to look for answer in the wrong thing. Yes. The answer is in love. We don't have any yes. problem. Yes. The knowing God through love has really done a lot to me. It has done a lot to me. Not only did he restore my marriage, he restored my relationship with Jesus. He gave me so much peace. In fact, I'm having the best of Christian life. Even though you are separated from your wife. Yes, and yes, not only did this love message restore me and my wife, it restored my Christian life. I'm having the best of my Christian relationship with God. Mm. It's, it's, it's been so awesome. To, you know, the fact that I, I was the secretary of Biafra community in Torino, where I am right now. Are you, si their secretary. Are you serious? Yes, I was their secretary. Today, I took their register back to them. You know, I gave it back to them, and I, I brought the message of PSA <laughs> to them. And I, I brought the message to them, and I was trying to tell them that, Listen, have you listened to DSA? And they said, who is that? Who is DSA? I was telling them he's a pastor. I said, he has a transformational message for Nigeria. Immediately I mentioned Nigeria, they get very angry. They don't want to hear Nigeria. Wow. You know, and I tried to tell them that this, we need to think about how to love and how to forgive and how to, you know, we, if we cannot love, I don't think we can exist even as a Biafran nation. No. If we cannot, if we cannot think about love, who are the people that will form the Biafra? Who? Hmm. Who are the people? So the same thing that is happening in Nigeria, even worse will happen in that Biafra that you are thinking of creating. Yes. So I brought these ideas to them and they, they were trying to listen. But I told them that I love you guys. No, I will be coming to meet with you guys. But this idea, I cannot continue to be what I have been with you people before, you know. You know, trying to speak against uh, Nigeria, calling it a zoo and all that. It doesn't make, it doesn't, it doesn't bring the change. You have become born again, again. Born again, again, and again. <laughs> <laughs> they say, they say, you are such a blessing to us, particularly to me. I, I am so grateful. And uh, each time I do a live video, you know, I do a live video on a regular basis, and it flows with love. I don't, I don't have hate anymore. For me, hate doesn't exist anymore. H hatred doesn't exist for me anymore. Wow. It's only it's only love that flows from my soul. Only love. Huh? Only love. Somebody Hate said I need, somebody said I need to do a series on Biafra. I've already done it. I have I have twenty seven article twenty seven page articles on on Biafra four series. Really? Yeah. I need to go. I need to go and look for it. You know, the Radio Biafra wanted me to come and speak, oh. Really? Yeah, Radio Biafra called me that they want to interview me because they, because so many Biafran people are coming on the platform to listen and they like what I'm doing. So, wow. Ra so Radio Biafra said they want to interview me. But I said, before you say you want me to come to your platform, please go and read my articles that I wrote. Go to Google and write yeah. Sunday Adelaide on Biafra or my reflections on Biafra. You will, there, there are four. There are four articles. So because my opinion will not fall with your. It said, I love you people. I love you too much not to tell you the truth. And the yeah. oh, my, my the opinion, the things I wrote there. There is no. I said if Jesus Christ will come, he will tell you the same thing. If yeah. God, if you go to heaven today, I, he will tell you exactly the same thing I wrote in those articles. I said you might not like it all, but that is what heaven will tell you today. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. So let me not delay other people that want to call in. God bless you, DSA, and God bless the family. The family that Raphael, you Raphael, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, sir. Blessings. You, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Revolution, the, the apple, though. <laughs> Revolution, don't they take place. Unity, they call for Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. You see, God is planted in miracle. You don't know me. The same testimony will come from the northerners. Yesterday or two days ago, I got a, a I got a message. Somebody wrote it here on the comment. Maybe somebody read it too. He said he's a Muslim. I think he's coming from one of the Muslim countries. He said, I'm a Muslim, but with this kind of Christianity, I want to I want to join DSS church if he, he has a church. I want I'm ready to convert to Christianity now. 
if, it, if Christianity is going to be this form of Christianity that DSA is practicing. Hello? We have a caller. Hello, good evening, DSA. Yes, sir. Who is calling from where? Hello? My name is Peter, calling from Belgium. Yes, sir. My name is Peter, I... calling from Belgium. How are you, sir? How are I'm you, very sir? Fine. I'm, very fine. I'm doing great. Yes, we are hearing I'm, you. I'm doing great. Yes. We are hearing you, sir. Hello, there I, I don't have, I have listened to many callers since yesterday, the whole week, listening to your love series. Yes, sir. And I, ju I just want to thank you for, for this, for this privilege and opportunity that I'm alive to listen to this message, to your message, this of message of love and transformation message. I'm amazed for the, all the testimony that is coming, truly testimony. That you have not, we have not seen for church, our Nigerian churches for a very long time. We only have testimony of somebody have died, somebody have uh, sick, somebody is sick because we are. No, I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm full of uh, my my heart is full of joy because when I see our brothers speaking, calling, giving testimony, sharing of joy, I'm full, I'm so very happy because I'm I'm happy that I'm a, I'm a part of this movement. I'm a part of this transformation. I'm a part of this God not doing that God has sent you to our new generation to liberate us for this for this uh, hands of uh, 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 our Christian uh, uh, Jews. I'm so very happy. I just want to give a brief testimony uh, because I'll be calling uh, before you still recognize me. I've, uh, I have registered for your. For the mentorship uh, oh good uh, class Be beautiful yeah. beautiful i have registered i said it's not only to listen to you it's not only to to listen they have to be uh, they have to be moved they have to be um, a I system to i have to do something yeah i have to start from somewhere i have to start from somewhere and uh, i just want to say this many ideas of what to do has been coming to my my understanding uh, I wrote a proposal for where to start, what to do, and uh, because I've not been going to my former church because I cannot cope with the system. Uh, although some some sisters, brothers, they start calling me, and uh, I finally just let the Holy Spirit to lead me. I don't want to uh, uh, say what I was supposed to say. So, but today and yesterday, I was able to call one or two, three of them that I. Uh, I feel choose to speak with because they are saying ah, they, they don't want to call because two of our sisters confessed to me today that they went to my pastor to ask him why I'm not coming because I was a good guy, I was a good, I'm a good man, I'm a good person. So it's really uh, strange. So he, I think he said different things today. And as I said, I thank God that the Holy Spirit did me to tell them today uh, what is going on, that they should go to this platform, that this is the reason. Uh, the reason why they are fighting me, and uh, they said I'm a, I'm, I'm a rebellion, and so many other things that I was against in the church concerning the finance and everything. So that's why the pastor was against me. So, but today I just want to appreciate God for His doing transformation in my life. I just want to thank God for that because your word, your teaching is hard because they say the truth, when you hear the truth, the truth shall set you free. Yes. The truth has set me free because that is what we Nigerians don't want to hear now. That is what most of us, because they have, we have been living in lies. We have been living in big of lies from at least our Jew. They have been showing us, teaching us wrong doctrine of Christianity. They have been showing us long, wrong doctrine, how, how different different from what we are hearing today. I'm so very happy because now even I, I, I went somewhere this evening, I told the brother that I still listen to you now. I think most of them that I'm, I've, I've, I've uh, shared to the, on, this, on this platform right now, I told him, look, we don't have to. Some people say they don't, go to, they don't want to go to church anymore, so we don't want to leave them like that. We want to start something, a, a, a house fellowship uh, that we can uh, play of your video, form of your teachings, we can, I can select it because this is what, you, these are some of the writing I'm doing now. Bring out some writing out that you are, from where you start from uh, the, uh, this, maybe this love series of uh, pagan, pagan, uh, paganism and so many other things. Who I am, all those teachings. So I'm writing some writing up even this morning and out to our sisters and some of our brothers that they are fed up. 
So because I was able to speak to three of them today, and they were, they were amazed. And most of them are scared to come to the platform. They said they, uh, they don't know what people will say. I said, no, don't think what people will say because at the last day, nobody will be there. You will be judged <laughs> according to your, according to your, 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 your doings, according to how you live in this world. Nobody will be there for you. So you will not wait and see the wrong thing and know that things are wrong in the house of God. Then you just stay there. You don't want to move. I said, God has sent a Messiah. God has sent a, a, our time to us on the dinner. I said, so this is the time for us to really uh, uh, um, follow the truth for us to know this because the truth is already there the truth is there is for us to understand because some of us is is difficult for so many people to understand so i just want to thank god because my life has been transformed i had the brother that was calling the other one that called even yesterday i was so there was a one that was shed tears of love because i shed, shed tears of pain because uh, tears of uh, joy because i know there are many people testimony upon testimony because it's not your power that you are using because I keep on to ask myself, how will you able to, how, how, how are you able to do it three times in a day, talking to people, talking to, to the world, talking to everybody? I think it's not your strength. It is, it, is, it, is, it is the spirit of God that is living in you because I don't think any man, any normal human being can stand, can do it because what you are doing is beyond is beyond all my own imagination, beyond my own uh, expectation. But I just want to thank God, my transformation in my life, my ways, my family, my home, my, my thinking, my way I'm thinking. I don't have any plan, have plans now. I need, I mean, the joy, the joy of love is in my heart. I need, I just want to do something because I think God has given me the opportunity to be in this part of this world. And now I want to know, I'm, I'm very focused to see what I could contribute. It's not because I've listened for you now for like three months. My life has completely changed. Wow. That's what I just want to tell you. They say people have given testimony. People are watching. People are saying things. Are, people are talking about you. Most especially in Europe, I'm sending to my brothers everywhere in Italy, in Spain, everybody to keep on listening to you, to keep on uh, 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 listening and listening, and they will get it. They don't have to listen one day, one off and on. They just have to listen. At the end of the day, before one topic, before one one topic of one evening, they will get the message. Because it's the, 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 the spirit is there. The, the spirit to understand is there. When you are teaching, they just have to listen. That's what I was telling two brothers today where I went to be. I just gave up. I said, just, just guys, just started listening. Don't pause. Don't move. Just started listening. Listening from the beginning to the end. You will see. You will see the difference. And your life will change. You will not be the same again. GSA, thank you very much for, your, for this, this, this powerful a moment of our life that God is using. It's not your strength, as I've said before. It's the, it's the spirit of God that is using you. I pray for God to continue to guide and protect you and your family and everything. And uh, our, our lady girl, the, the, the strong iron lady, what is her name? Mariwa. She's, she's also, she is powerful. She's resistant. She, she's speaking the word. She's speaking it. She's saying it. And I'm so happy when I'm listening to her that she is a woman that uh, uh, another product from Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Sonia Adelaja. And we also, we, many of us will be proud in, in very few months, few years to come, that we were a part of this movement, a part of the truth that have changed us. Thank you, Dr. Sonia Adelaja. I appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you. Beautiful. Beautiful, sir. Thank yes, you sir. so very much. Wonderful. Good word. Thank you so, so much. Now, someone is asking that uh, I should do the message the article, I should do it in a video. Uh, you know, we need technical people. We are so busy. So if you know how to convert some of these uh, tests or articles to video, why can't you help us? You could help us. If you want to help, write us on Facebook, on Facebook Messenger, and we'll be happy to receive your help. So, uh, you know, we need as many technical people as we can. Uh, so please come and uh, let's work on it. Uh, I guess we might uh, have some more callers, uh, but uh, let me see. Do we see have callers? Okay, let's see. Okay, it's like uh, that's all for today. Okay, that's all for today, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. God bless. Bye.